Uh, my name is Sarah Gramanzini. I am the Access Program Coordinator. Presenting alongside me today, I will have Erica Woodbury, our Program Assistant with Access, as well as Anna Mora with Counseling and Access Programs. Um, just a few um, housekeeping things. Um, our session begins right now at 2. Um, this webinar will be recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, please turn off your camera. Microphones will automatically be muted by the hosts. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please use the chat feature and we'll have plenty of time at the end to answer questions as well. Thank you, Sarah. It appears there's no participants at this time, so perhaps we want to give it a couple of minutes and okay. then we can can start our recording and if no one shows up, then that's okay. We'll still have the recording. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our virtual open house. 
Um, my name is Sarah Gramanzini. I'm the program coordinator for the Access Programs. Presenting alongside me today will be Erica Woodbury, our Access Program Assistant, and Anna Mora with Counseling. I'd like to go over a few housekeeping things. Our session will begin today at 2.06. Um, this webinar is recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, please turn off your camera at this time. Um, microphones will automatically be muted by the host. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please use the chat feature. There will be staff available to answer those questions throughout. And we'll also have plenty of time at the end to answer questions as well. Uh, now I'm going to pass it over to Anna to go over the counseling portion of the presentation. Anna? Thank you very much, Sarah. So every student who attends Saracoso has a different goal. And for you, it might be taking classes for personal interest, or maybe your goal is to earn a certificate, a degree, or transfer to a university. And whatever that goal might be for you, we want you to know that the counseling department is here to support you throughout your journey. And we are here and we care about your success. For this reason, we do offer services at every site. We also offer services on the phone or online. Um, however, during this pandemic, we are only meeting with students via phone or through Zoom. But we encourage you to meet with a counselor or educational advisor for the following services that you see listed on the slide. Um, academic advising is so that we can guide you with your course selection. Um, we can also help you learn about majors at Saracoso, understand the program requirements, whether it be for Saracoso or another college or university. Um, things really can change rapidly when it comes to requirements for certain programs and the prerequisites. So that really makes advising an important aspect of reaching your goals. Career advising refers to um, maybe you're not really sure what your career path is going to be or what you want to pursue. So we can definitely help you explore the tools that are going to assist you with that career decision making process. Personal counseling would refer to um, perhaps understanding the expectation of being a college student or interpreting college policies or even linking you with support services and programs. For instance, you know, if you met with a counselor and advisor and you shared that you were struggling with buying textbooks, then we would be able to link you with programs like EOPS or Emoja or talk about things like work study or the library reserve system that we offer. And then um, in terms of crisis counseling, if you do ever experience a crisis event or a disaster, you can also seek our support. It's not um, unusual, I think, for a person's normal coping or problem solving skills to be overwhelmed when in a crisis. And I know that right now we're in a crisis, um, but really our goal is to provide you that emotional support and um, offer you or a connection to resources and it can also mean making a referral to our community agencies. And lastly, as you see, um, we're also able to help you with just general assistance at all points in the enrollment process. And I'll go over those in just a second, but we want you to start off on the right track and really to remain on the right track, we highly encourage you to meet with a counselor or advisor at least once every semester. So the enrollment process, if you're not already familiar, this is going to really help maximize your success at Saracoso. And so it involves completing the orientation, completing the placement component, which I'll talk about in more detail, and creating an education plan with your counselor or advisor. Um, the orientation is something that will show you how to access online. Um, you can take this orientation um, kind of at, at your own pace. You don't have to complete it in one sitting. And it does have videos that make it pretty engaging, uh, but it's gonna cover information that is important related to admissions and records or financial aid, the academic programs that we offer, the support services, um, student life, and really much, much more. So 
in regards to placement for math and English, if you're a new student, then you certainly want to schedule an appointment to discuss your placement with a counselor and advisor, um, because we no longer are administering a placement test. Actually, Assembly Bill um, 705 was signed in 2017, which I don't want to say prohibits, but essentially we're no longer able to use placement tests. And so we're using things like your high school performance rather than a test. And really the goal of this new assembly bill is that you're not placed in remedial courses that might um, delay your progress or deter you from completing your goal. So what we do is we sit with you, we meet with you, we um, look at your high school transcript if you've graduated within the last 10 years. Um, and we use that information on your transcript. Um, so your high school coursework, your GPA and your grades to help place you in math and English. And if you happen to be out of school uh, or out of high school for more than 10 years or you don't have access to your transcript, then we can certainly use um, self-reported data or we have something called the guided self-placement, which is like a short questionnaire that um, has been developed by, by our uh, math and English faculty. And so at the end of that appointment with your counselor or advisor, you would have your placement recommendation. And that recommendation is gonna incorporate your program of study or whatever your goal might be. So, you know, for instance, if you were pursuing a liberal arts degree, um, or, or a major that was related to liberal arts, like psychology, then your placement in math would be different than if perhaps you were pursuing a business, a science, technology, engineering, or math degree, the STEM field. Um, so at the end of that appointment, like I said, you'll, you'll know a specific class for English and math, as well as any recommendations in regards to the co-requisites. And I'll show you where you can find this information on our website as well. So another piece that a counselor and an advisor um, can help you with is the development of your student educational plan. And that educational plan is really vital to helping you stay on track. Um, it's something that you would meet with an advisor for at least an hour and it would be individualized to you. And it's pretty much like developing your roadmap for your specific goal. And so we can do a paper version of an education plan. And now we have the use of Navigate, which I'll talk a little bit more in a couple slides. Um, but Navigate has an academic planner that you can see uh, in real time. And it helps you communicate with your counselor um, regarding your requirements for whatever your major might be at Saracoso. But this education plan is pretty much that roadmap that's going to help you see what classes are required for your given major. Um, it's going to help you complete your courses in a timely manner. And it's really going to be um, something that is going to help you stay focused and motivated. So you're not taking classes that you don't necessarily need or they're not, that are not going to be helpful in reaching your education goals. So this is a really important piece in um, your success at Syracuse, so we encourage you to take advantage of that. When we designed this orientation, we weren't going to spend a lot of time um, on the presentation. We wanted to offer the opportunity to answer questions, but I thought it was just important to um, show you where you can find our majors at Saracoso. Again, if you're not really sure what you want to pursue, you can browse our website to see the different associate's degrees that we offer, whether it's an associate degree for transfer or something in science or um, the certificates as well. So if you go to the main site and you go under programs and classes, you will see a link that says majors and it'll look like the page you see pictured. Navigate is one of the tools that I mentioned with the educational planning piece and this is uh, like a student platform that you have access to and 
the cool thing about Navigate is that if maybe you're unsure as to what your major might be, you can take a really short quiz. It's only, I think, like five questions, and it's called the Major Explorer, and it's available through Navigate, which you can access directly from our Saracoso site. Um, and this is going to let you explore your interests and match you up with majors at Saracoso. So that information really is vital um, and helpful. Um, to you and I think to your counselor and advisor because we can see those results and then that can help us um, guide you a little bit better. But Navigate also has other features like um, letting you know of important deadlines and events, activities, as well as resources, and then that academic plan that I mentioned. Um, and you can even register from that Navigate platform. So you can register for your classes for summer or fall kind of with a one-click registration. Through our uh, counseling department, we also have student success courses. And so we highly encourage that in your first semester at Saracoso, you do consider taking one of these courses, one or more. Um, and you can tell by looking at the titles that they're all about success in college, right? And so our counselors actually teach these classes. Um, we have the College 52 class, which is called Becoming a Successful Online Student. So if you're going to be taking any online classes, we highly recommend this course. It's only one unit and it's only three weeks. Um, we also have the College 100 and I believe that's taught mostly at our high schools, but we have our College 101 and College 102, which are um, courses that are going to help you um, apply skills like time management or note taking or memory skills or goal setting and we talk about things like motivation and we do a lot of um, individual and group exercises um, and really connecting you with the college resources at Saracoso and so all of this is helpful in your journey as well as in life. And then our College 131 class, which is called Making Transfer Easy, is highly recommended for anybody who's considering transferring to a university. Um, I will note that uh, for the summer semester, if you're looking to register for summer, that our college classes um, are actually called counseling. So College 102, you will see on the summer schedule, and it's actually under counseling, C-O-U-N. C101. So just look for the titles. And again, if you need any assistance, we are here to help you develop that class schedule and help you get on the right track. So on our website, um, you if you go under student services, you'll see the counseling department and the counseling tab on there. And so on your slide, you see the different phone numbers for the campuses and the sites that we have at Saracoso. Um, if you're just not really sure which one of these sites would be for you, you can start with that 760-384-6219, which connects you with the Ridgecrest main campus. And so our office hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 to 6, and Friday, 8 to 12. So if those times work, you can meet with a counselor or advisor, and we can help you with any of those pieces that I've highlighted. Okay, so now we are going to hand it over to Sarah, who's going to cover access programs, which is the support programs um, that we offer or some of the support services that we offer at Zero Coso. All right, thank you, Anna. Switching gears slightly, um, I'm going to share with you a bit about the access programs as a whole, and then we're going to um, discuss those in more detail. So access programs are the five state funded programs that are dedicated to helping and assisting students who are faced with additional barriers in obtaining their education. Um, okay. So here we have, this is our access program team. Every student is assigned an individualized team consisting of counseling and an access assistant, and also a peer mentor if they request. Services offered uh, depend on what program that student qualifies for and also what their needs are. 
each student's program is going to look a little different because it is individualized to each student to meet their needs. With the ACCESS program, we offer uh, comprehensive services. Um, so some of the extra support staff, folks that can help. We also offer study hall, uh, book loan programs, if they're available, and exclusive opportunities. So different activities that students can participate in to help them be successful. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Erica and she's going to discuss in further detail the EOPS or the Extended Opportunities Programs and Services. Erica? Thank you, Sarah. So for our first program, it's EOPS and the eligibility requirements are for students to be enrolled in at least 12 units for fall and spring or six units for summer. Also, you have to be a California resident demonstrate financial need through financial aid, be educationally disadvantaged, have not earned an associate's degree or higher, and make satisfactory academic progress. So our application period for EOPS is open now, but it's not open throughout the whole year. So for right now, it's open until the, the first week of classes. So for EOPS, we have academic and counseling support, and that is workshops, social and cultural activities. So right now with the campus being closed, it's currently through Zoom. We have academic monitoring and planning and career and transfer advising. And we also offer peer support through our peer mentoring program. So EOPS is like over and above services for Saracoso. So you are assigned a counselor and you are assigned an access assistant, such as myself. You receive priority in registration, and you can attend study hall where we have tutors available. Also, for our over and above services through EOPS, we offer financial aid support. So that is a parking permit or bus pass, a Coyote card sticker, um, printing privileges, a UC and CSU application fee waiver and cap and gown assistance. So these are the services that we offer, but they're always um, contingent upon the funding that we have at the moment. Uh, we also get a, an EOPS grant. We have a book voucher and book loan program. And we also offer a laptop loan program. So CARE is another program that we have. It's Cooperative Agencies and Resources for Education. This is an extension of EOPS designed to support single parents while in school. So CARE is funded by the state of California and helps provide many services and opportunities unique to single parents who qualify. Eligibility requirements are you have to be accepted into EOPS and have already applied for financial aid. You have to be a single parent at least 18 years of age, be the primary earner and head of household, receive public assistance for you or your children, and be enrolled in 12 units when you enter the care program. For our care program, we have even more services that are offered in addition to EOPS and that is a care grant which can assist with educational expenses. We have an additional book supply grant which covers books or supplies that are not covered by other programs. We have a child care grant for students that have additional study time, evening classes, or other special circumstances. We have meal cards which um, can be used through our Pony Expresso and our student services. And we have a transportation grant which covers emergency vehicle repair costs for the semester. Our next program is our Next Up program and it's Cooperating Agencies Foster Youth Education Support. This is also a supplemental component of EOPS and the goal of Next Up is to help navigate eligible foster youth on their college path and conquer any challenges on the journey to success. So 
So eligibility for next up is you have to be accepted into EOPS. You have to be a current or foster or former foster youth who is in care on and or after age 16. You have to be under 26 years old at the start of the academic year and be enrolled in at least nine units. So for next up, we are always accepting applications. So you can apply at any time in the school year. And then for even more services, in addition to uh, EOPS, we have additional grants based on funding, uh, meal cards, the same for Pony Expresso, and supplemental books and supplies. And then on to CalWORKs, Sarah. Thank you, Erica. Moving right along to our CalWORKs program, much like Next Up, CalWORKs is um, accepting applications all the time which is pretty awesome. Um, so the eligibility criteria for CalWORKs is the student has to be 18 years old and receiving cash aid. Um, they have to have a current passport to services and be in good academic standing. CalWORKs works very closely with the Department of Human Services as well as the Saracoso Career Center's Jennifer Marshall. So the services that CalWORKs provides, CalWORKs provides various scholarships, uh, on and off campus work study opportunities, uh, advocates and works as a liaison with social service agencies, and also offers workshops in different skill buildings. This provides students with quality education programs and employment training experiences that can lead to economic self-sufficiency. Okay, moving right along to DSPS, I'm going to pass it over to Anna to go over our DSPS program. Thank you, Sarah. So if you are a student who attended high school and maybe you had an IEP or a 504 plan, then we highly encourage you to, to apply to Disabled Students Programs and Services. Um, and so applications are always open. Um, DSPS is that program that is for students with disabilities. And really the main goal is to create equal access to all of the, the programs, to the activities that we have on our campus. And so typically you apply and you provide verification of your disability. And so it doesn't have to be necessarily a learning disability. Um, we service students who have a wide range of disabilities, as long as that your disability creates some kind of limitation for you in that educational environment. And so once you're approved for services, then you meet with your counselor, um, your access counselor specifically, and you have a collaborative and interactive um, appointment and process really throughout the semester, but you end up developing an accommodation plan. So again, that's going to be individualized to you because um, every student's um, needs are different and every student's disabilities is, is different. So that is the program in itself. Um, the next slide is going to just give you a general sense of the types of accommodations that we offer. But again, because everything is individualized, um, one student won't be getting the same accommodations as another. Um, but we do have things like assistive technology and adaptive equipment. So if you were taking a class on campus and you know maybe you had a physical disability that made it hard for you to sit for a long period of time, or to sit in a in a hard chair, then we can provide something like a padded chair or an adjustable table or desk. Um, we have things like uh, listening devices for students who have hearing impairments. We have uh, voice recorders, so if you're in a live lecture, you can record what your um, instructor is is saying so that you can refer back to your notes if maybe note taking is difficult given your disability. Um, we also have things like software um, that can enlarge things if you're a student who has a vision impairment. Uh, there's screen reader software, speech recognition. Um, we also have alternate media and so that ends up being like instead of having a traditional print book, if maybe you learn better and you retain information better by having an audio version or um, a large print, then those would be um, accommodations or that would be considered alternate media. 
And a lot of students also have access to testing accommodations so that you can demonstrate your learning um, in, the, in the way that works for you. Uh, again, given your disability, you know, for, for one student, it might be um, having extra test time. For another student, it might be using an assistive technology where it can read you the test questions so that you can understand and comprehend them better. So it just really depends. It's very individualized. Okay, so that concludes um, the access programs. I know we went over a lot of information in just a short amount of time, um, but I think the biggest thing is to um, know that there's counselors and advisors on our campus um, that can assist you. We're available on the phone or online and access programs is there if you need additional support because maybe you have um, some challenges that make reaching your educational goal a little bit more challenging than for other students. So that's why Access Programs has those over and above services than what the general college student would be getting. So um, at this time, we, we can pause for questions. And I'm not sure that anybody does have any questions. Um, Okay, so there's only a few of us in this webinar. So I, if there aren't any questions, I would still like for uh, us to use some of the time to show you how to access our um, webpage and um, definitely our contact information, which you see on the slide. So we have Access Programs Office at that um, 384-6250 number. You can also send us an email at accessprograms at saracoso.edu or the counseling department. You can reach the, the main line, which is that 384-6219. Or if you have any forms like transcripts or um, concurrent enrollment forms or what have you that you need to send, um, to get you ready for that counseling or advising appointment, then you could send it to counseling underscore forms at saracoso.edu. Okay. So at this time, if Erica, um, if you would like to share your screen or you are sharing your screen, sorry. If you would like to open uh, um, one of the, the main Saracosa webpage, that would be helpful just so that we don't disrupt this um, recording. Um, but if you can go to program, uh, programs and classes, and if you select majors, that's where you're able to learn about the majors that we offer at Saracosa. We have our degrees listed, and so if you were interested in a degree for transfer, you could select that and see what the requirements are. Um, also under Student Services tab, if you go to the Counseling tab, that's where you can get our contact information. You scroll down, you see that we have all of our numbers listed for the different sites as well as links directly to the orientation and the placement, and then our student education plan page. So you're able to see the, the different general education plans that you can choose from depending on your major. And so again, it might require that you're meeting with a counselor to understand these requirements a little bit better. Um, Erica, if you would like to go to the Student Services tab, you can also select the Access Programs. And if you would like to go through these, Erica, just really quickly, I need to mute myself. Okay, so for Access Programs, some additional services that we have is the study hall right here. So you can attend this at a drop-in basis. 
Um, we have tutoring, peer mentoring there, study strategies, individualized attention. So if you have questions or you need help with anything, we have study materials to make sure that um, you're able to stay up with your classes and we have other resources available as well. Um, so our times is Mondays and Wednesdays and, and we have it throughout the week actually. And then we have our peer mentor program here and our, our um, minimal qualifications and if you want to apply for EOPS, so you would click on the link right here. And then, so here's our application. And it's a web application, so you just input all of your information. And then submit. And then this math question is just <laughs> to Derek, just to make sure that I guess you're not a robot. So, um, and then for DSPS, if you want to apply for that program. So this one is not a web application. So you would just go to the application. You would need to print it out and fill it out. Okay. Um, so that covers all of our programs and how to apply. Okay. So let me go back. So I see a question here. Can an out-of-state student athlete apply for EOPS once they establish residency? So yes, we encourage everyone to apply anyway, and then we will determine um, through the application if you are um, eligible. So I would say yes. Oh, and thank you, Penny, you already said yes in our comment, in our chat there. So is there any other questions? Or do we have any other staff who wanna get on and say anything? We spoke about how each of these programs is very individualized. So when in doubt, just give us a call, give access programs a call, give counseling a call, and we'll help, help you to navigate where you need to go. Thank you, Sarah. And so we'll just take a minute here to, to see if we have any questions come up. All right, I think that concludes our session. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us.